Welcome, everybody. We're delighted to have you with us uh, today uh, for our Utah Valley Technology and Genealogy Group class. Uh, we, this is uh, Saturday morning, the 8th of October of 2022, and we've just had a presentation about the uh, writing of the early history of the uh, Genealogy Society of Utah um, uh, with Jim Allen and uh, Jesse Embry. We now have the uh, privilege of hearing um, Lori Werner Costillo, uh, who's the second, uh, first vice president of our organization, giving us a class on evaluating and destroying your ancestral brick walls. <laughs> now, a little bit about Lori. She is the first vice president of our uh, organization. Uh, she's a prominent teacher, uh, teaches many classes at various op uh, 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 venues, uh, including the BYU uh, uh, Family History Library. Uh, she's been a, a, a vice president uh, for many years for our organization. She's been on the board of directors of the Utah Genealogical Association. Uh, she's done all kinds of things, and I, I don't want to take any more time to talk more about her and let her uh, go on. The class will now start and will last until about 12 noon uh, on Saturday. And, then, and it, it, uh, Lori, if you want questions while you're talking, uh, you can stop for that or you can we can hold the questions till the end. Uh, there is uh, uh, on uh, the uh, chat and the Zoom link the places that you can ask questions or type in uh, information. Lori, let's turn the time over to you to tell us about how to destroy, your, well, first of all, evaluating, and then how to get rid of your own ancestral brick walls. Take it away. Thank you. And there should be a link up in the Zoom chat and on uh, Facebook for the handout. It's seven pages or if, uh, some of my favorite links. So, all right. Well, here we go. So what is a true genealogy brick wall? There are three situations that are true genealogy brick walls. The first is that records were lost to fire, flood, insect, theft, purposeful destruction, or improper care. Uh, second, records were not kept in the first place. You know, rules were made about records being kept and laws were passed, but that doesn't mean people obeyed. So sometimes you'll go to look for something that should be there and it isn't. And third, the owning entity, such as a church or civil government, refuses to allow the records to be seen. Anything other than these three situations is not a brick wall, but a researcher limiting their own success. And we'll talk about that. Could this be you? Building a brick wall, how does this happen? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Asking some questions may be helpful. Have you checked more than just what is available online? Sometimes we tend to think that's all there is. So have you checked with local, regional, state, and national archives, libraries, historical and genealogical societies. Um, I remember I've been consulting for, oh gosh, 30 years or so now. And I remember somebody coming up to me one time and asking the question, um, well, I've, you know, I've done everything that's on the family search catalog. That's it, right? <laughs> and I said, no, that's, the, that's only what the church has been able to um, get their hands on to, to film or to collect, collect and uh, there's much more out there. We know that today. And it's wonderful how things are progressing and more and more things are being scanned and uploaded or at least indexed or finding aids are being made for archives and libraries. So we need to go out there and really go after it. You know? So the, another question is, have you only checked jurisdictions that exist today? Have you used historical gazetteers, atlases, and maps to determine if there are other jurisdictions and locations you need to search? Most counties today do not have the same boundaries that they had in the beginning. Um, 
even uh, states. So um, there may be other there may be other jurisdictions that you need to check. If there was a fire or other disaster, have you checked neighboring jurisdictions that may have information? This is the Atlas of the uh, Historical County Boundaries developed by the Newbury Library in Chicago. Here you can select a state and delve into the history of each county that has existed and still exists in the United States. There are also boundary maps for all the states, a new one for each time a county boundary was changed, a county created, altered, or decommissioned. This is one of my favorite sites for historical um, purposes. This is another website that I like very much. Um, each state page contains rotating animated maps showing a new map for each year. There was a new county or a boundary change. I actually like the way these maps um, look uh, better than the ones at the Newberry Library, but the Newberry Library has a lot of other information um, that is extremely helpful. So there's also a set of maps um, here that show the counties of each state at the time of each federal census and past and present maps of the US are overlaid so that you can see the changes in county boundaries over the course of time. And of course, there's many other historical maps available as well. This is the interactive map of Ohio. And um, you can, you notice the, the upper uh, arrow there. Um, you, can, you can have the whole series of maps just play one after the other and literally watch the county development of Ohio over the course of time from the beginning. You can hit that stop button that's up here to stop it at any point in time. Or you can go down to the list that the other arrow is pointing at and select a year. There's not a, a map for every year, but a map for every year there was a change. And then just below that, you can see the Ohio census years where you can click on the maps that match the census. This is so helpful to be able to see which counties that your family might have lived in over the course of time. The county where you know them is probably the county as it ended up today, not um, the changes that went on over the course of time. So have you charted up all the information that you have discovered so far? Oh my goodness. I have tried to assist people before who have not bothered to chart up all their information. And we just ended up doing the same searches they'd already done and uh, everybody feeling frustrated. And so really, you know, if you haven't done this, uh, take the bull by the horns and, and get that done. This will help you see what you have and where the gaps are in your search. This is the family search wiki page for genealogy forms. And this is just the very tip top. Um, this, and this is if when you scroll down this page, which just keeps going and keeps going, it actually provides links to nine of the best free forms websites online. And you can see the list of those here. They're wonderful. They have everything from census forms to, you know, group sheets and pedigree charts and uh, research logs and, and all that kind of thing, plus a lot more. There's some really creative stuff that's been created, uh, uh, cemetery forms, you know, that sort of thing. So um, I only added one other link in my syllabus and for because this one is so complete, but that one other link contains another 44 links for free forms. So there's got to be something there that'll help you. And this is, of course, in addition to putting your stuff on a a database program, um, such as you know, Ancestral Quest or Legacy or Roots Magic or something like that. One of the best ways to further analyze what you know and what you don't know about an ancestor or family is the use of timelines. Have you created a timeline with the information you have? This will help you as you analyze what records exist for this time and place, what you might have missed, what time periods in your search you might have missed, and what military events, epidemics, economic crises, et cetera, that occurred in the state or the nation that may have impacted your family. Some of these timeline links in the syllabus are to articles which will show examples. Some sites are where you can build your own. 
You can always Google genealogy and timeline software for more options. Keep in mind that there are also timelines for historic periods and locations available online that you can study for events that you may wish to include in your own family timeline. This is the National Archives page that gives links to all the state archives in the United States. Some archives are in combination with state libraries and some are separate entities. As an example, this is the website of the Tennessee State Library and Archives, and this is their brand new website for their brand new building. Um, you may be worried that these sites are unfriendly to the general public and complicated to use. And I, I agree that, you know, in, in times past that may have been so, but in the last 15 years or so, they have really been making an effort to become user friendly and public friendly. Um, you can see right here that right on this very front page, they have a link for researchers and genealogists. They've dealt with enough of us now, they know we're out there and they have gone overboard to really help us to be able to use their facilities and their records and resources. If you click on that particular link, you'll go to this page, right to the good stuff. Um, they ha will have some items online and some that can only be seen in person, which can uh, also often be ordered. So you can dig right in. You can see finding the archival finding aids. They have a genealogy index, county fact sheets for all their counties of Tennessee, online resources. You can just see all the good stuff there. Um, and this is that the Tennessee State Library and Archives Research Resources page. There's a, you can see right here there, your question. If you have a question about finding one of these type of records, you can click right on it. Um, that's the right, research resources here. Here's uh, research guides that they have put together on all the different types of records they have in their collection. They're super good and the link to them is right below that in the blue. And here are the instructions for if there was something you'd like them to search for you and make a copy of and send you, um, the instructions are right here and the link is right here. I show you this not because you necessarily have Tennessee research, but because this is how um, these websites work, and they may look a little different, but these same features uh, are available at um, all of the libraries and archive, state libraries and archives that I've used. This is another link, um, this uh, Wikipedia link. This time, this is a, um, a chart of state historical societies and museums two more great sources for material. Remember that museums also have uh, research materials. They, they don't necessarily advertise that up front, but that's where their displays come from. That's where, that's where you know, the classes and, and presentations they do come from. So look for these types of groups on the county and local levels as well. Um, regular review. This is a very important habit. When you um, when you periodically examine the records you have already located, you may gain new insights because the more experienced you become as a researcher, the more you may see in that record. Um, the more you learn about the time and place, the ethnicity of your family, etc., the more meaning you may derive. You want to set goals for searching new types of records and make sure you understand why a record was made and what information it could contain. So are you avoiding success by avoiding certain types of records or record groups? Sometimes we tend to just, you know, keep to the stuff we feel comfortable with, the stuff we've used before, the stuff we know how we know how it works. But, you know, we need to to do better than that. So I encourage you to try everything, all sources, not just those that seem most likely. Ancestors can be very surprising, as you probably know by now. Uh, try records with which you are unfamiliar and possibly uncomfortable, such as court records, land records, immigration records, etc. Um, all, all of these things, uh, more indexes are being made and more things, more collections are being organized, so they're easier to locate and use. 
Log all searches, including those where you found nothing. This will help you refrain from pointless repeat searches and also help you keep in mind that if you didn't find them there, you need to figure out another place to look. The other thing you would, you would want to keep track of is to remember to keep track of all name spelling variants. Uh, I use research folders a lot. And I, I like, and also in my uh, electronic databases, I like to keep track of the, the various um, spellings that I have found records and or for my family members so that when I find a new resource, I can remember to check all of those variants and hopefully um, find more hits. Some suggestions I'd like to make are don't just search for the person, do a full family research, not just direct line. Search for the entire family, including parents and siblings. Watch for those aunts, uncles, and cousins. Because if something happens to the parents, that's where the children usually end up, is with an aunt or an uncle's family. Uh, watch for their fan group. And the definition of that is friends, associates, and neighbors. Uh, tracking them may help you keep find your family. You'll need basic background history for locations of interest. Um, you'll, you'll, wanna, you'll want to, in fact, it makes a lot of sense to create a locality guide for your county of interest. Become familiar with the history of and records kept, what archives and repositories are available, etc. I've included a couple of links about creating locality guides in the syllabus. And you can see some of the, the things of interest that may give you information about your family and also their lives. I'm a big proponent of... Uh, finding out what their lives, their daily lives were like, and what it was like to live in the county or the city that they lived in. Um, and the other thing is social history. Um, city directories will help you learn much about the community as will newspapers. You're wanting to find out churches because they've got records and benevolent service organizations, service groups, interest clubs, uh, sports groups, labor unions, women's groups, because all of them kept records and your family may well have been involved. So you're looking for city directories and newspapers that will help you find more about those types of things. And then you can look for the records of those groups. Some cautions I'd like to emphasize. Hints and shaky leaves are just possibilities. Do not assume they are all correct. I once was helping somebody and I figured out at last that they had the wrong idea about hints and shaky leaves. And I said, are you accepting all of the hints that come up on, you know, the various website? And she said, yes. And I said, oh, no, no, those are possibilities, uh, you know, for you to look at. But, you know, they're, they're not necessarily telling you they're correct. So. We want to remember to not just use the index for records, but to use original records and sources whenever possible, and to purchase the certificate if necessary. Um, that can save a lot of time and a lot of grief. <laughs> Family stories may or may not be helpful or true. You may need to pretend you never heard them if they are leading you astray or leading you nowhere. Because if by using those stories, you're not running into your family, that, it, the story must not be, there may be some element of truth in it, but it might be the wrong place. It might be the wrong time period. So keep that in mind. Have you requested help? And you can get it almost immediately. Did you know that? And free on top of that. Um, you want to email archivists and librarians. See the website for the archive or library in question. There will be an Ask Us section with contact information. This allows you to ask experts at the local um, historical and genealogy, uh, genealogical societies as well and on from their websites. This is experts and being willing to give you their help for free. Let me show you a couple of examples. This is the help page at the Genealogy Center of the Allen County Public Library. 
which uh, says that it's the second largest genealogical uh, library in the United States. And you can see here that it says, our services, ask a genealogy librarian. So there's your opportunity. And if you continue here on this website, it even tells you that you can get a consultation there, gives you the phone number and also a web link for them. You can make a free appointment for a 30 minute personal research con consultation with one of their staff members or librarians on some aspect of your research. I think that's just awesome. I think we don't take advantage of that often enough. Um, and when I have done this, I have gotten wonderful help. So um, we just don't have that excuse anymore that things cost too much or are too hard to do. So just another thought for you there. This is the help page. We're back at the Tennessee State Library and Archives. And they have in giant letters on their website, uh, library and archives, ask us a question. And you can do it by email, by phone. They have a chat that runs from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. their time, of course, that's Central Standard, uh, Tuesday through Saturday. So um, awesome opportunity to get clarification on their record sources or you know, ask for an opinion about where else you can look for um, particular information that you're after. Now, let's talk about crowdsourcing. Types of genealogy crowdsourcing. Brainstorm with a friend, post queries about your research problems, create a blog, use the message boards at Ancestry and the message boards and county or surname sites at Linkpendium. Those are two different sets of message boards. So it gives you two chances to post a query to people who uh, know what they're talking about. You could join the County Historical or Genealogical Society and they usually publish quarterlies. And if you're a member, you get to place queries in their quarterly publications free of charge. Um, join, you might want to join a Facebook genealogy group or participate in the National Archives History Hub, uh, which is uh, free to do. And that is through the National Archives. And that you might also want to create Google Alerts. I've included links about all of these ideas and how to do them in the, in the syllabus. And what may be the greatest crowdsourcing event ever, DNA. Have you taken a class, studied a website, or read articles or a book on this subject? Do you understand the difference between autosomal, mitochondrial, and Y-DNA? Have you thought about which ones may help you solve your mystery? Have you given it a try? There are some great DNA websites and blogs available. This is the top of a long list of options at the International Society of Genetic Genealogy Wiki. This is an awesome website full of information regarding DNA. And it is written so the ordinary person can understand it. I know because I read some of it and I understood it and I'm not a, a DNA expert by any stretch. <laughs> so um, try out these blogs, find out uh, who you like, who has the things that are helpful for you. Do you need to upgrade your skills? So first of all, let's talk about refreshing your current skills. Make sure you know about any new features on the genealogy biggie sites that, you know, Ancestry, Family Search, My Heritage, Find My Past, et cetera. Make sure you understand how any wildcard search features work on the websites that you use. Using wildcard searches correctly will definitely enhance your search success. I guarantee that. And maybe you'll be looking to refresh any foreign language and or handwriting skills that you may have had in the past. Every month, Krista Cowan does a 15 to 25 minute video. Uh, it's on YouTube about what is new or what is coming at Ancestry.com. She's a lot of fun and very informative. To find information about the other websites that you use, just Google what's new at 
and fill in the blank of what website you'd like to find out, whether it's Family Search or you know My Heritage and on. And uh, that should be enough to to help you. Other thing is, you know, to subscribe for some to some blog like the Eastman's genealogy uh, newsletter, where one of his main features is he just announces the new things that are going on at the genealogy, the big genealogy websites. And so that's another way to pick up on that. How about developing new skills? What are you going to learn next? New computer techniques? New websites, new collections, new record types, new jurisdictions. Uh, maybe you're going to learn old handwriting for the first time. Um, how about finding blogs about specific a specific topic or location of interest? Maybe you're looking for new books or genealogy magazines and newsletters that may be of help. There's lots of things out there. And I've tried to put a selection of those in the, in the syllabus. This is the BYU script tutorial with training available in eight soon to be nine languages. Um, this is a fantastic website which will help you learn and practice the skills you need to succeed with old documents. Here are the tutorials currently available. English, I, I one time had somebody say to me, gosh, I'm glad I'm all English because then I won't have to learn a, to read a foreign language. But if you've ever looked at old English documents, that is a foreign language. In fact, it's harder for me to read old English documents than old German documents for some reason. But so they have English, German, Dutch, Spanish, Portuguese, Latin, and many in many countries, when you go back far enough or in certain church records, they will be in Latin. Okay. And then they also have French and Italian. And the one that they're working on right now is Russian. And these are fantastic. Um, it will help you learn to recognize the different letters, words, names. They've got um, practice, uh, oh, what would you call them? Practice activities for you to do to see how you're coming along and to help you see which things you need to do some more work on. It's just wonderful. In the syllabus, you'll also find a link to this free 16 page booklet by Thomas J. Kemp. It's called Tearing Down Your Brick Walls, Removing Roadblocks in Genealogy Research. This should be very handy. Now, these are some of my favorite places to find helpful free genealogy videos and webinars. At YouTube, oh yeah, let me get to that one in just a second. Uh, we have BYU um, Family History Library classes and webinars, Family Search Library classes and webinars. Roots Tech on Demand Archive, the Family Search Learning Center, that Allen County Public Library Genealogy Center. They just are having webinars all the time and have a wonderful um, archive of their past videos. There's Legacy Family Tree webinars, which uh, cost to be a, you, that costs to be a member. But the incredible thing about it is you can watch any of the webinars when they're broadcast live the first time for free. Uh, the only thing you don't get for free is the handouts that go with the classes, but you can watch any of them for free. And periodically they have other videos that they put up online for free. So it's, it's worth um, making a free uh, account on legacy webinars uh, so that you will get messages about those. Uh, YouTube, as I started to say earlier, uh, you can, um, you can go to YouTube and you can search by the entity that creates the website. For example, you can look uh, many of the state archives and website uh, archives and libraries actually have a YouTube account where they post the videos that they create. Or you can search by topic um, or location and plus genealogy and find a lot of helpful things there. And then, as I said, any of the libraries, archives, historical and genealogical societies, uh, many of them host um, videos, uh, monthly even, or maybe even more often. So that's something to watch for. And I've, I've enjoyed so many presentations. If you're doing you know, research in a specific state or something, when you go to the state library or archives or their state historical or genealogical societies, those um, programs will often be specifically about things 
um, research for research in that particular state or county. And so that's doubly, you know, helpful that way. So this is what the BYU Family History Center page for classes and webinars look like. You can see the webinar section here up at the top, and it talks about um, the past recordings in the webinar library right there. It's the link for it. Um, they have Sunday classes. They have weekday classes that are available online, um, instructional videos, and all kinds of things you want to check out there. This is from the Family History Library in Salt Lake. This is their library classes and webinars page. It has um, the first link here is uh, to the archive of past webinars. The next link here is they actually have a list of some other places besides the Family History Library that hold regular webinars. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, let's see. They have, the, they have uh, a list of the online classes that are available through the Learning Center, which is another spot on the Family Search website. So um, we'll talk about that. And then they have a class schedule. They do it quarterly. So right now, the ones that are up, um, the list that's up right now shows September, October, and November. The classes, they broadcast almost daily something from there. So this is the top, if you keep scrolling down this page, what they do is separate the classes that they broadcast um, most day, most every day by different topic. The first ones are general research classes and family search webinars and handouts. So um, webinars to help you learn how to better use the family search website itself. And if you scroll down this page, there are uh, links for classes for European locations, the British Isles, Asia and the United States. And these all, I don't know if you see this column here, but it says handout link. So almost all of them, the classes have a handout that goes with it. And even if you don't have time to watch the class, uh, you could look at that handout for assistance. The other thing is these classes will wind up in the class archive uh, eventually. So and they, oh, and they also have some uh, Hispanic research classes that are actually in Spanish, if that's of help to you or anyone you know. So this is what the Learning Center page uh, on Family Search looks like. And this page is set up so that you can sort, this is a sortable um, spreadsheet, and you can sort it by um, the topic, by title, by presenter, by language or by location, such as the country. So those are really wonderful. This is the Roots Tech On Demand library, uh, on demand um, uh, video library page. And this allows you to search through 1500 plus classes on 185 topics in 30 plus languages. So, um, I would think that you would be able to find something there that would benefit your, your uh, research case. Okay. At the Allen County Public Library main page, you would, this is what it likes, looks like going in there looking for these sorts of things. You would select the virtual library, which is right there. Click on that. Oops. Okay, I didn't mean for both of those to come up. But on that next page, this is two things that pop up. This is genealogy workshops, and you can just click right on this, or you can click on this links for, view, for viewing more genealogy videos. And it tells you here uh, a little bit more about the genealogy center there, and um, that you can also go to YouTube and find um, their, their videos if that's easier for you there. All right. And this is a genealogy search over at YouTube. I just put in genealogy brick wall strategies and several more classes came up there. Um, this is just the top of the page of the links there. So it's that easy to use. Just go to YouTube and search on your topic or on your, you know, if you want the uh, Tennessee State Library and Archives or whatever. 
So many wonderful books, including county and local histories and genealogy and methodology books are available to download or use free of charge at Internet Archives. Um, and I'm showing you what it looks like there. That says books that are not out of copyright uh, are even available there now. You know, not everything, but it's always worth a try. Um, I found a copy. I was thinking about buying this particular book, Hidden Sources, because I like it a lot. It's ideas about um, sources that you might not have thought of in the first place to, to research on your family. And I found out that they have a copy of it there. And you can see the arrow, it says, pointing to borrow for one hour. If you click on the down link there, you can borrow it for up to uh, two weeks if nobody else needs it. And so it's a way to just, you know, have these things available um, without having to purchase them or keep them on your bookshelf at home. And it's also a nice way to get a good look at them and see if it's something you might want to purchase for your, your personal research collection. So um, let's see. Let me just show you a couple more. Oh, and in order to use, you have to create a free account there. It's no big deal. You just, you know, it's like everywhere else, you choose a username and password. And these are more free books um, at Internet Archive about our subject today. They've got 500 brick wall solutions, more brick wall solutions, and the Family Tree Problem Solver, which is one of my all around favorite books for um, this genealogy research in, in general. Cindy's list has actually has a topic, hit a brick wall, question mark, <laughs> where she has categories of um, links that may be of assistance to you as you're trying to solve your brick wall and even more related categories. So that's always somewhere to check. You may have noticed these links um, at the family search catalog page. Other catalogs to, continue, uh, to consider, there's a world cat here and the archive grid. Let's talk about that. This is archive grid. It actually now includes over 7 million records describing archival materials. So these are finding aids for materials, um, manuscripts and uh, things that are in, arch in archives all over the United States. And it says this brings together information about historical documents, personal papers, family histories and more with over 1,400 archival institutions represented, Archive Grid helps researchers looking for primary source materials held in archives, libraries, museums, and historical societies across the United States. This is especially handy because archival collections often do not end up where they started out and are not, uh, sometimes are not where you think they should be. Um, you never know, but this will help you to find them. You just put your search in this uh, search window up here. You can narrow it down by state over here if you'd like to. It's really pretty easy to use. And uh, this is a wonderful thing to be able to search through. I just search by location when I get a new location to research or by family name. Um, this is the brand new uh, World Cat page. <laughs> They've just redone that. And there's the search showing you the search window here. World's, WorldCat is the world's largest network uh, of library content and services, and therefore the world's largest library catalog. Once you've located a resource of interest, WorldCat will tell you where the closest copies are to where you live. Um, and you, so you may find something at a local a library, or you may locate the information you need to do an interlibrary loan please learn to do interlibrary loan. It will open up the resources, resources across the United States to you. It's so awesome. Well, and this is, they have, a, they have an advanced search now that you can do on WorldCat, which may help you even uh, get your search results more specific. This, I wanted to show you how easy it is to actually do an interlibrary loan. You need to check your public library website or give them a call. And this is, I'm, I live in Orem, so this is um, my public library, and it, they just, on the main library page, you know, under library services, I clicked on interlibrary loan, and it gives you the rules here, tells you 
what you'll need to do. This is just the top of the page. So it's really not hard to do. And uh, you'll be glad you did. If you live in this area, if you live in Utah Valley, you can do interlibrary loan through BYU free of charge. So um, you just go on the BYU Harold B. Lee Library site and click on interlibrary loan to get more details there. Um, and I just kind of recommend that you carry your research with you at all times and a way to take notes. I always have a notepad in my, my purse. Um, so you might, it might be your phone, a tablet. Um, by having your information in cloud storage at some place you can reach, you know, through the cloud from anywhere you are or via a jump drive. You never know when you'll meet someone who could help or when you'll, or when you'll have new ideas come to you that you need to jot down or when you'll be stuck somewhere wishing you had something to do. Okay. Have you been willing to hire a pro if necessary? If the professional can knock down your brick wall, you can carry on from there, or they can work with you and teach you how to knock down your own brick wall. Breaking brick walls, you can. With new ideas, it is possible. The end. No, it isn't. It's really just the beginning of your research journey. Thank you for being here and good luck with your brick walls. Are there any questions I can answer? I can't get my, let's see if I can. I'm having a hard time getting my my there there my mic is back on. Uh, that was just a wonderful presentation, Lori. All kinds of good information there. I wasn't aware of a lot of that stuff, and I'm sure that many other people weren't too. Uh, are there questions? And are there uh, anything on from from Zoom and uh, oh, uh, on uh, uh, Facebook? <laughs> Who's Wait watching? A minute. Okay. Oh. Is is uh, Carol or somebody Marilyn somebody watching the Facebook uh, page to see if there are questions over there? Um, yeah, I don't see any questions right now. Okay. You know what, Laurie? I I wanted to stop you about fifteen times throughout the video, <laughs> and yeah. and I say, stop, Laurie, stop! I need you to tell me how to do this. And, <laughs> That is always my experience with you. You write these articles and I can't get the newsletter out because I have to stop and figure out <laughs> what you're trying to say. <laughs> you are such an amazing resource. I, I um, This is just absolutely incredible. And that this library card, um, I want you to go back to that one and explain this, getting this library card. Um, was that through at BYU or? Oh, you mean oh, you mean interlibrary loan? Interlibrary interlibrary loan. loan. Was yeah, that all oh. you need? To, all you need to do is go to the Harold B. Lee website, and I think it's right on the main page, and you click on it, and it gives you the phone number of the interlibrary loan office. And I know when I signed up, um, I had to call them, and they gave me a, like a username or a password or something. Um, to get in to get onto the system and then when I got on there I could change the password to something that I you know my own personal password and wow. what you do what you do from there is and, and it's so wonderful now when you go into interlibrary loan using that username or password it pops up this page and you just tell it the book or the article or whatever it is that you have you have found and that you're interested in and um, and then you tell them, say, which edition, if there's a more than one edition or anything, they want you to put whatever uh, your preferences are. And then you just click, you know, you just click um, submit and then they get back with you via email, uh, whether or not they were able to find a copy of it for you. Wow. And if you have used, if you have used, um, Oh, what did I just talk about? Uh, if you library loan. If you use that. Um, uh, oh, the. Um, oh, the link to um, WorldCat. 
if you oh, found yeah. it in there, you should be able to get a copy of it. The only time organizations don't like to send out their stuff is if it's so old and fragile. Mm -hmm. But the wonderful thing about interlibrary loan is it's not just about being able to get that particular book or whatever. But if it's something that they don't want to send out, they'll usually copy pages for you or copy a chapter for you. Wow. If you can tell them what you're interested in in that particular book. And then the most wonderful thing is when you get it, they'll send it to you electronically. So you'll already have it scanned and you can add it right to your collection of oh, information on the family. And um, so, and they're really anxious to help people do that. I remember one time they went to, for, to great lengths for me uh, doing that very thing. They said, well, they can't send the book. What, you know, what, you know, what particular Part of this book you might be interested in or what surnames you're looking for and and oh. they copy those pages and sometimes when you're you're on the byu uh, catalog for example i ran into an article that i was interested in from jester or from one of the other subscription um sites that you know these college libraries um belong to where they get art research articles and and um Oh, journals and theses and uh, that sort of thing. When when I wrote to Interlibrary Loan and said, I know I, I'd really like to see a copy of this. It's on the BYU catalog, but I don't I don't have access to it since I'm not a student. How, oh. can, I do that? How can I do that? And somehow they unlocked it for me. Oh, so just the <laughs> one, so so just the one thing for, and was it a temporary uh -huh. unlock? Yeah, wow, just, just that article or whatever. And a lot of times, there's articles that are just on the very specific thing that you're interested in. You know, well, I have to tell you this this newsletter that I did this um, the Allen County Public Library, um, the link that you sent and we put in there. I I had never seen that. Um, I felt clueless, um, but that was another major, uh, Lori, I don't know how you know so much, but it's awesome. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think, I'm, I kind of soak up stuff on genealogy. <laughs> and, and then you write it so well. Um, so I tell you what I, I need a class on now is all of these links in your handout and how to organize my bookmarks. Uh, because you have um, these links that you're pulling up are just amazing. They are just, and I think I know I would want to go back to this and that. So anyway, I, you know, I don't have a super great system of, of links. What I do is when I create these handouts, those are my links. There we go. I go, back to, I go back to my own handouts when I, you know, I have a question you, about something given us an instant set of um, links bookmarks for our own use um yeah, yeah this uh, is speaking about bookmarks i just tried to download your syllabus uh, with the link that was in the chat oh, yeah and it, it, it says unable to open and it gives the path and and the title suggestions for evaluating and blah blah blah, blah. uh it gives the title so it finds it, but it says, cannot download the information you requested. Huh. I, I wonder did, if, if because I did anybody else have a hard time with that? I, I, you know, maybe I need to sign up. Maybe Dropbox is only letting one person see it um, or something like that. And so um, I, I, but I, I was able to download it. Yeah, yeah I, ju I just clicked the link and got right in. So oh. I, I thought I did too, but, it, I'm not, but I haven't looked at it. So I'm not it sure does. It did come up with a thing that says you got to sign up for Dropbox, and then I dismissed that, and then I was able to see it. <laughs> oh, there's so, I... so many computer nag messages nowadays. <laughs> oh, God. Um, I, well, you know I what? I the link, the link for Facebook too, just so you know. I look on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I put I just put a new link in the uh, chat for us that you can okay. try that one. Oh, a new, another, oh, link. Okay. another link, a different link. Yeah, and same, if, same, if you same don't, Eileen, oh. if you don't get it, just let me know and I'll just attach it to an email. Yeah. Lori, I'm sure. Uh, okay, I'm I, I uh, got into for um, it says uh, suggestions for evaluating, 
and it sounds like the problem is that I'm not um, not signed up in Dropbox when I tried to get that or something. I don't right. know. So, so dis dismiss you should, that. You should have message. to be. Yeah, you just dismiss that, like that, Eileen, and then you'll be able to do it. Yeah, I had to dismiss it too. So, yeah. What did you say, Jerry? I'm oh, sharing oh, your screen. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, okay. I think I, I think I have it now. Gosh, those links look so infernally long boxed up like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I got to figure out how to save this. <laughs> Well, it said download in one place, and then uh, okay. Let's see, down. your file is downloading. Okay. Oh, you're, so you're getting it now. Yeah. Let's it's see. About, it's seven pages, I think, at this point. Okay. People on Facebook, Facebook were able to uh, open that that uh, Dropbox link. So, oh, so okay. Let's see. Let's I'm right. trying to figure out now where I should save this. <laughs> Well, I, this is a handout worth having, but, and Laurie, this was a great presentation. So thank you yeah, thank very you. much. I, I'm other? always grateful for your positivity and, and opening doors. Oh, thank you. Wonderful. Yes. Well, we appreciate it. And, and oh. on interlibrary loans, it, would the Orem Library or the Provo Library, would they charge where BYU Library would not? But yes. They'll only charge for postage. Yeah, they do. Oh, about, it's it runs about... It's, it's about ten dollars. Yeah, yeah uh, it can be. Uh, they said anywhere from two to five dollars on the Orem website. You know, like if you're ordering a big, heavy book, I guess it's worse. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> and a lot of our genealogy books are big, heavy. Are books. big and heavy. Yeah. <laughs> but cool. you know what? Like I like to say, it's cheaper than a gallon of gas, and it's cheaper than a, a plane ticket. And um... That's exactly <laughs> right. Exactly right. And I and was not know... aware that the yeah. Allen County Library had that thirty-minute. Uh, a program for uh, a personal Consul help. Consultations, I know. And the more yeah. I look around at locations, the more, you know, different locations have yeah. those kind of opportunities. And I think, wow, we should be taking advantage of that because, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's true. We want people doing good things. <laughs> Allen County, Allen County is absolutely fabulous. They probably have a couple of webinars a week. I'm constantly, now that I'm, you know, signed up with them, I, I'm constantly getting it. And they have a thing this month, since it's the Family History Month, they have stuff going on almost every day. And a lot of it's online. And yeah. I'm signed up for several webinars. So, yeah, yeah that's Kurt Witcher. He's the, yes. the director. Yeah, he yeah. comes out all the time for the BYU conferences and for Roots Tech. And, He's and wonderful. Everything. He has a new, he has a thing he does called Wednesdays with Witcher. And, um, I, I, I attended this week and he just, it's like a half an hour where he kind of muses on a genealogy subject and gives do you his... think, do you think he could come talk to our group about the Allen County Public Library and all the oh, wonderful things they have? That's, that's a great, great, great idea. I idea. Have do a presentation sometime. I, I could try. Do it. In fact, they actually, I think they actually have a couple of recorded presentations about it already. And they, up online, they actually have some videos you can watch about getting started there with their stuff. One of the things, it is the second largest, you know, I don't think anybody counts BYU in on that because I actually think BYU is the second largest. But of the of the known genealogy libraries, it's the second largest one in the United States. And they just have, they have stuff about everywhere, even though it's in Indiana. They, you know, they have a lot of information about everywhere. And and one of the things that they are doing uh, is the only other place I know that's doing what the fam what uh, the church is doing. And that is that if you want to send them a copy of your family history, either printed or um, on a computerized version, they collect those and they put those as part of their collection for other people to search. And so it's one of the things that I recommend to people about if you want to make sure your research survives, send them a copy. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. I know, I know that the DAR library does the same thing. And um, yeah, that they have a huge collection. Uh, I've, been, I've actually been to the Allen County Library and it is, it is enormous. Is and, it? And they're the ones that do Percy also. Yes. And, Percy. and you know uh, what? The they periodical source index. Uh -huh. They let other people host it in times past, but they have taken their baby back to home. Oh, so you just search it on their website now. Oh, and, uh, and are, are, are the articles available or just the index? 
uh, the index is available and then on their website, one of the things you didn't see it, but it was on one of those cells that I showed where there was a, a link to request one of the re request the article itself. And, and they do that, that for like seven dollars. They'll send it to you. Yeah, you but, used to have to pay for it. Some, someplace uh, was putting those online. Uh, yes, they're working on it, actually. They're, they were the, the Find My Past, was it? Uh, or was it? Was yeah. it Find My Past? Find My Past yeah. had it the last. Well, it was going to. I don't know whether they ever did. Yeah, they, yeah, start, I, they started to. But. They, you know, it works a little bit differently now that it's back to with Allen. Yeah, with Allen County. Working, and yeah. I actually attended. They So in their, in their uh, bank of recent um, videos, they have a video about how it works and how to use it. So, wow. so, cause I thought, oh, wow, I, I never quite, I really didn't like how it worked on find my past. And uh, mm. so um, I thought I'm going to be sure and find out how it's running there off of their own servers now. So, yeah. but there's also other, when, what they tell you is to, before you order a copy of the article from them to just go online and see if you can find it somewhere else. But also okay. they tell you, and it's true that family search has a lot of those. Oh, um, oh. as a lot of the over the years they've had you know at least some years of all of those uh quarterlies and things that uh, where the articles come from but i also noticed that byu has loads of of the genealogy publications the journals, you yeah. have to go to the second you have to go to the second floor in the periodical section to see them it's not in the genealogy department so um and so and Lori also I have used their interlibrary loan to order the articles from the Allen County Public Library. So oh, there's that, so I've got that free. There's oh. a number of ways to operate that. Oh, that's so, an idea. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so if that's true. That's that'd be another way to get at it. Okay, so, so now I have a new treadmill time <laughs> list <laughs> of <laughs> videos that I have to watch and so that I can stay current and, and catch up to Larry. Who's, who's, <laughs> wow. Uh, that's well, I, you yeah. know what? I'm just, I'm just so glad that more and more search, more places are turning up with more stuff because, you know, it's just, oh, it's great. It's yeah. just hope for our. Uh, Wonderful. You know, well, uh, are there any other you, last questions? Mm -hmm. Anything else that we need to talk about before we, uh, before Jerry signs off? Um, okay. We, thank you for the great job. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Thank you very much, Lori. We appreciate <laughs> yeah. all the effort. That was wonderful. Present oh, these thank for you. us. Yeah, very helpful. Okay. Thank you, everybody. We'll talk to you later on. Bye. Thanks, you guys. Have a good one. Take care. <laughs>